This young man had already reached the pinnacle of success early in his life, yet this achievement brought him no joy whatsoever. On that particular day, he sought out the Dark God, his eternal enemy as well as his ally, for a battle. It was clear that the Dark God stood no chance against him. In its dying breath, the Dark God, furious, demanded to know why he had come to slaughter its kin. Why he seemed so detached, as if there were no reason at all. After slaying the Dark God, he picked up an item, it dropped a reincarnation magic stone. It was time for him to end this tedious life. Rewinding time a bit, he was once a humble office worker in Japan named Yuri. His first reincarnation into this world happened when he was 30 years old. This world, where magic that only existed on television was real, fascinated Yuri. He dedicated himself to tirelessly practicing various types of magic until he was recognized as a magic emperor, unbeknownst to him. For his second reincarnation, having mastered magic, Yuri decided to master the sword. He trained hard and defeated the magic emperor, just as before, until he realized that everyone now regarded him as the sword saint. Is standing at the pinnacle supposed to be enjoyable? Not at all, it was incredibly boring instead. His days were filled with nothing but monster hunting, and at some point, the very people he protected began to see him as a monster. Fed up with this life, Yuri decided to live true to himself in his third reincarnation. Yuri woke up in a dilapidated room, having just been reincarnated and remembering nothing. After seeing his reflection in a puddle of water, he began to piece things together. At that moment, a giant goblin appeared before him, with several smaller goblins around it. This made Yuri realize he was in a goblin den. The giant goblin questioned Yuri's presence there, unarmed and unarmored, insinuating if he intended to defeat them. This reminder triggered another memory his previous life as the sword saint, who could wield any weapon. Yuri picked up a wooden stick from the ground, and instantly, his brain recalled all the skills from his past life. When he began to fight, Yuri didn't need to do anything special. His body moved on its own, attacking the goblins and showcasing Yuri's terrifying strength. The large goblin, now terrified, ordered its minions to retreat immediately. A thought flashed through Yuri's mind, suggesting he should not let them escape. He charged forward, slaughtering them all. There were only a few goblins, but if he allowed them to flee and they returned with reinforcements, it would be troublesome. After annihilating the goblin group, Yuri finally had a moment to review his situation. In his previous life, he was the sword saint, and before that, the magic emperor. He remembered all his skills, a rare occurrence since as the sword saint, he had not recalled any of the magic emperor's skills. After the battle, Yuri began to check his items, surprised to find that his new companion was a slime. Having just defeated the entire goblin horde, Yuri picked up some of their useful items. Among the loot was a rusty sword, which he picked up to examine. It was no better than the wooden stick he had used earlier. At that moment, Yuri gained a new skill called analysis, allowing him to identify the entire history of the sword, which was left behind by a fake adventurer. The sword was still usable but not durable, and repairing it would be difficult. However, Yuri wasn't concerned about the sword. He was more interested in his new skill, which could analyze anything around him a very convenient ability, albeit currently in the middle of a forest surrounded by nothing but trees and grass, which bored him. It seemed like he might need to find a village to explore. Suddenly, a slime popped out from the bushes, confusing Yuri. He pointed his sword at it, ready to attack, but stopped himself, noticing that the creature didn't seem hostile. Yuri offered the slime a piece of dried meat, which it happily ate without any sign of suspicion. Shortly after, Yuri acquired another new skill called taming. The appearance of the skill board floating in mid-air intrigued him, though he couldn't physically touch it. After finishing his immediate tasks, Yuri considered finding a village, but then he noticed the slime seemed reluctant to leave him, perhaps due to the taming skill enabling him to understand the emotions of magical beasts. It must be fate, Yuri thought, and decided to name the slime Lime. From that moment on, Lime would be Yuri's companion. Although Yuri was unsure if Lime would be of any assistance, the slime had become his first friend in this new world. That evening, Yuri had yet to find a village, forcing him to spend the night in the forest. 
Using a wooden board and a stick, he struggled to create fire, puzzled as to why he couldn't ignite it using a method he remembered from his past life. It took an exhausting effort before Yuri finally managed to start a fire, subsequently gaining a new fire magic skill. At that moment, Lime scurried over with a pile of dry wood for Yuri to burn. Together, they enjoyed roasting and eating meat, when suddenly, a loud noise startled Yuri. Using his analyzed skill, he spotted a beastman being chased by a shadow monster deep in the forest. Yuri recalled that shadow monsters were weak against magic and debated whether he should save the man, especially since he had just acquired a new magic skill. Dismissing the thought that the man was training to gain a skill, Yuri approached him to offer his help. Without waiting for a response, Yuri turned back and unleashed his fire magic on the shadow creature, driving it away with his formidable power. After much effort, Yuri finally encountered someone who could speak. He couldn't let the man escape, following him until he was utterly exhausted. After a lengthy explanation, the man agreed to return to the campsite and share a bit of his story. Yuri initially thought the man was practicing to acquire a skill, but he explained that acquiring a skill required decades of training, not just running around. The only reason Yuri could gain skills so easily was because of his memories from past lives. Curious, Yuri asked why the man was wandering in the forest. The man became irritated, revealing he had been betrayed by his closest friend, who had left him in danger to escape. Just as he finished his story, the monster that had been pursuing him appeared. Yuri deliberately pretended not to see the approaching monster, but when it attacked, he had no choice but to retaliate. Pulling out his rusty sword, he infused it with mana, and with a single strike, he defeated the beast. However, the sword broke into pieces after the attack. After dealing with the creature, Yuri turned to look for the beastman, but he had disappeared. Yuri had hoped the man would lead him to the nearest village, but now he was left to find his way alone. The following morning, Yuri was busily dissecting the giant monster he had slain the previous day and dragged back to his camp. He managed to salvage a considerable amount of edible meat, though the task was laborious, especially since his sword had broken. Now, using a sharpened stone, he was almost done with the job. Upon waking up that day, Yuri discovered he had gained a new skill, realizing that normal activities in this body automatically granted him new abilities. The skill he acquired was called Attribute Less Magic, which sounded complex, and Yuri wasn't sure how to use it yet. However, he figured it might come in handy eventually. After finishing with the monster's carcass, Yuri found a large B-grade fire magic stone within it, likely valuable. He planned to trade it in town for some money. However, Lime seemed very interested in the magic stone. Considering Lime was his first and only friend, Yuri didn't mind giving it to the slime. Surprisingly, after consuming the stone, Lime's body grew larger, disappointing Yuri initially since he expected more than just a size increase. But then, Lime enveloped the carcass of the giant bird monster they had found, transforming into the shape of the creature. This transformation, allowing Lime to copy all the abilities of the monster, genuinely astonished Yuri. He mounted Lime, ready to start their journey to the nearest town by air, hoping this mode of travel would be faster. After a while, they finally approached the first town. Yuri realized that landing in the town with Lime in its current formidable form could terrify the townspeople. So, Yuri decided to land on an empty plot of land a short distance outside the village. He then asked Lime to revert to its original form. Surprisingly, Lime could do even more. It shrank to the size of a mouse, allowing Yuri to hide it in his clothing. Now, it was time to enter the town, which, according to the beastman from the previous day, seemed to be the trading town of Ridial. As Yuri walked through the town, he noticed a lack of vitality among the townsfolk, who all wore serious expression. A vendor calling out to sell cold drinks caught Yuri's attention. Since his reincarnation, he hadn't had a single sip of water, prompting him to inquire about the price. One large jug of water cost 300 gil, and Yuri, unsure of how much money he had taken from the goblins, handed over all his coins, only to find he could afford just a small cup. 
Complaining about the high price, the vendor pointed him towards a well at the edge of town, explaining that the constant sunshine and lack of rain had depleted the town's water supply, making water a precious commodity, especially for those with water magic like herself. Realizing why the town seemed so lifeless, Yuri refused the vendor's offer to trade a large cup of water for his clothes, deciding he would never buy water again. He then approached the well and used his water magic to fill it up and splash water around for everyone to catch, leaving the vendor speechless. To Yuri, what he did was no different from what the vendor could do with water magic. Now dealing with hunger, Yuri, tired of eating the meat from the giant bird monster, sought something different to eat. However, he had no money left. He found a muscular man named Alex and asked if there were any jobs available. After some thought, Alex gave Yuri a task related to a stone in an empty lot. Alex, a carpenter, was working on a construction project for a noble family on that piece of land. Two days prior, a landslide had caused a massive rock to fall right onto the site where Alex needed to work. After a lengthy explanation, it was clear to Yuri that all he needed to do was move the rock. Approaching the boulder, Yuri placed his hand on it and began channeling magic into it leaving Alex utterly confused. Once enough magic was infused, Yuri warned Alex to step back, and the moment he finished speaking, the giant rock exploded into smaller pieces, making it much easier to transport elsewhere. With that, Yuri had successfully helped Alex with his problem. Turning back to the main issue at hand, Alex began considering what profession would suit Yuri, given his strength. The idea of becoming an adventurer came to mind adventurers earn rewards by taking on various quests, enjoying the freedom to do what they like without being beholden to anyone. It was an attractive prospect for someone seeking freedom and variety in their work. Yuri quickly decided that he wanted to become an adventurer, and humbly asked Alex to lead him to the Adventurer's Guild. Alex, noticing Yuri's unnecessary formality, advised him that confidence was key to being an adventurer. It was important to respect others, but there was no need to place anyone above oneself. Following this advice, Alex led Yuri to the Adventurer's Guild to see what being an adventurer entailed. Now, Yuri was about to discover the tasks and challenges that come with the adventurous life. Stepping into the Adventurer's Guild for the first time left Yuri in awe. The place was not only stunning and luxurious, but also filled with so many novelties that he had never seen before. The scenery and the atmosphere gave Yuri a very unique feeling. It wasn't long before some people noticed Yuri, realizing that they had never seen him around before and quickly deducing that he must be a newcomer. They approached him, offering him a role as a porter for their team. Remembering Alex's advice not to let others bully him, Yuri immediately rejected the offer, determined not to serve or work for anyone else in his new life. Yuri then sought out the guild's receptionist to register as a member. The receptionist first inquired about Yuri's experience, as the guild had recently reformed its policies and could no longer accept inexperienced adventurers. She asked Yuri to list some of his achievements. With a history as rich as Yuri's, ranging from being a sword saint to a demon emperor, he had plenty to share but chose to keep those tales to himself. Noticing Yuri's hesitation, the receptionist offered another challenge, stating that possessing just one rare skill would be enough for admission. Yuri, having an abundance of skills, was unsure which ones were considered rare. At that moment Galio, the guild master, stepped in. He was hesitant to accept Yuri, fearing that a seemingly weak applicant could tarnish the guild's reputation. However, the receptionist felt it would be unfair to send Yuri away empty-handed. Eventually, they decided to use a device designed to measure the magical power within an individual. Yuri was simply required to channel his magic into the device, with a reading above 30 ensuring his acceptance as an adventurer. The appearance of the device piqued the curiosity of the other adventurers, who gathered around to watch. Yuri realized then that within this guild, unless you were part of a team, rivalries were inevitable, especially among the strong. To avoid becoming a target, he knew he had to assert his strength from the start. He questioned Galio about the device's capacity to handle high levels of magical power before beginning his test. The readings climbed steadily and showed no signs of stopping until the device exploded, leaving everyone, including Galio, absolutely astounded and speechless. 
Yuri's ability to destroy the device was proof enough that he was eligible to participate in a final test. Galio asked Yuri to follow him, and although Yuri had no idea what the test entailed, he was curious to see what it was all about. This would be the ultimate test, and if Yuri could pass it, he would officially become an adventurer. Galio led Yuri to the backyard, where a crowd had already gathered, all of whom saluted Galio upon his arrival. The test was set to begin in five minutes, with Galio acting as the judge. Yuri glanced at Galio and could tell he wasn't particularly strong, which made him wonder if it was wise to have him as a judge. However, Yuri quickly dismissed this thought, reminding himself not to judge others by their appearance, as subjective biases could be a person's greatest enemy. At that moment, a young girl approached Yuri and introduced herself as Phil, expressing her desire to get to know him. After learning Yuri's name, Phil smirked, finding his name unusual as no one around had such a name. Yuri inquired about Phil's experience, learning that this was her eighth attempt, not out of addiction to competing, but because she had failed all previous attempts in every category. Phil warned Yuri to be wary of the elderly Galio, noting that the difficulty of the tests had significantly increased since Galio became a judge. Yuri had already sensed this, especially after the magical power measuring device incident. The first test was a swordsmanship challenge where the contestants would face Galio directly. Yuri observed quietly, analyzing both Galio and the contestant. The decisive factor turned out to be the quality of the swords. Those whose swords were broken by Galio lost the match. When it was Yuri's turn, he realized he hadn't brought a sword with him, so he borrowed the broken sword from the first contestant. As the test began, Galio charged at Yuri, who simply stared him down, causing Galio to freeze in fear. This was a natural human instinct to become paralyzed when faced with danger. Using his agility, Yuri effortlessly moved behind Galio and pointed the broken sword at his neck. After just a few moves, Galio conceded, acknowledging his defeat. Following this contest, Yuri learned that Galio had taken a leave of absence due to illness, and another judge had replaced him, leading to all contestants passing the first round. Now, with only the second round remaining, Yuri was close to officially becoming an adventurer. At this point, an excited Phil approached Yuri, tears of joy streaming down her face, grateful to him for her advancement to the next round. Yuri was puzzled by her gratitude, only to find out that after his match, Galio had used his health as a pretext to take a leave, inadvertently allowing all other contestants to pass the first round by default. Phil advised Yuri to remain cautious in the second round. Shortly after, the second judge, Magni, Galio's twin brother, made his appearance. He led everyone to the B2 underground area of the Adventurer's Guild and explained the next challenge. The task seemed simple. A mysterious object would appear before them, and their goal was to use magic to destroy it before sunset. Magni, with a pointed look at Yuri, sarcastically thanked him for taking care of his brother in the first round, but warned that it wouldn't be as easy this time. As the test commenced, everyone looked bewildered, making Yuri wonder if the task was as straightforward as it seemed. According to Phil, the material was specially designed to be indestructible from the start. Other contestants began using their magic to no effect, struggling even to hit the target, let alone break it. Frustration was setting in among the participants. Seeing Yuri still standing idly by, Magni taunted him further, mocking his swordsmanship skills and doubting his magical abilities. Annoyed by Magni's incessant taunts, Yuri unleashed a fireball spell directly at the object, causing an immediate explosion that left everyone, including Magni, in shock. Yuri had used an infernal fire magic spell, stunning everyone with his knowledge of such a powerful and rare spell. Magni, completely taken aback, immediately apologized for his earlier rudeness and begged Yuri for mercy, fearing for his life. Yuri, unfazed by the ordeal, had merely used the spell in a moment of irritation. With this, he had effortlessly passed the second round, proving his formidable abilities and leaving a lasting impression on everyone, including the skeptical Magni. Magni, clearly frightened, no longer dared to make things difficult for the contestants. Consequently, everyone present passed the second round, and they joyously celebrated, praising Yuri for his remarkable strength. Phil was particularly impressed by Yuri's power and came running to commend him. Yuri just smirked, knowing that compared to his previous life, 
this was nothing significant. With the completion of the test, Yuri had now officially become an adventurer. He went to the reception to collect his adventurer's card, starting off at rank S, with the potential to rise through the ranks based on the missions he undertook. The receptionist continued to brief Yuri on various matters, including the possibility of taking on assignments immediately. While Yuri was attentively listening, Phil suddenly rushed over and hugged him tightly, thanking him profusely. In a surprising turn of events, Phil mistook Yuri for a girl due to his soft chest, which led to some confusion. Yuri decided to introduce Phil to Lime, his pet slime. Phil was astonished, not just by Lime's cuteness, but also by Yuri's ability to control a beast. Their loud conversation caught the attention of an irritated man, who yelled at them for making such a fuss over a mere slime. Yuri's attention shifted to this man, and upon using his appraisal skill, he realized that this was Jack, the teammate that the dog man had mentioned earlier. Deciding that getting involved with Jack wouldn't be beneficial, Yuri suggested to Phil that they go find something delicious to eat instead. The next morning, Phil rushed to Yuri's room early to wake him up. Opening the door, she found Yuri lying on Lime, explaining that the bed in his room was too hard, and Lime was much softer and more comfortable. Phil's eyes lit up with curiosity, and she excitedly asked if she could touch Lime. She then impressively leaped onto Lime, leaving Yuri astounded by her agility and wondering why she hadn't demonstrated such skills during the exam. Yuri then asked Phil about her early visit, and she explained that their adventurer's licenses were only temporary. They needed to complete a mission quickly before the guild could revoke their provisional certificates. Phil had come to invite Yuri to undertake a mission with her. Yuri agreed to join her, but first, he had some matters to take care of. Yuri flung open the window and unleashed a fire spell towards a distant tree, startling the spies who were tailing him and causing them to flee. They had been observing him from a hundred meters away with a telescope, which Yuri found extremely bothersome. He couldn't fathom why they would spy on him unprovoked, wondering if it was out of jealousy for his strength. Yuri and Phil then set off to fulfill their task, venturing into the forest. Phil excitedly shared with Yuri how fortunate they were to have received a mission to gather herbs, considering it one of the least dangerous and most sought-after assignments due to its low risk to life. Phil had risen early and queued at the guild to secure this mission. Yuri however was more concerned that they might be heading in the wrong direction. Gathering herbs would be quicker in the eastern forest, but Phil became defensive at the suggestion. She explained that the eastern forest was off-limits due to the presence of extremely powerful monsters which could easily prey on inexperienced adventurers. Yuri then remembered waking up in the eastern forest upon his reincarnation into this world, where he had quickly dispatched a giant goblin, a level B monster, without difficulty. He even mentioned defeating the bird monster Phil referred to, but Phil refused to believe it, insisting that she couldn't be fooled so easily by Yuri's claims. Continuing their mission, Phil led Yuri to a meadow in search of herbs. Despite her enthusiastic search, she found nothing. At that moment, Jack appeared, laughing and informing Phil that his people had already harvested all the herbs from the area. He then offered to give Phil some, to which she gratefully responded, only to be mocked by Jack for her naivety. He scornfully told her that nothing in this world, especially in the adventurer's realm, comes without effort. Mocking Phil's innocence, Jack loudly proclaimed this lesson before leaving, highlighting the harsh realities of their world where kindness is rare and often seen as a weakness. Yuri remained a passive observer, while Phil, visibly frustrated by Jack's taunts, unleashed a stream of insults at him. Lime, sensing the tension, transformed into its gigantic form and split into multiple smaller slimes to scour the area for herbs. With Phil's guidance, Yuri followed along, unfamiliar with the appearance of the herbs they were seeking. Shortly, Lime successfully gathered a substantial amount of herbs, while Phil only managed to find a single strand. Satisfied with the haul, Yuri was ready to head back to the guild, but Phil insisted on continuing the search to earn their reward rightfully. Lime then jumped onto Phil, using its soft body to clean her up and envelop her in a relaxing embrace, alleviating her fatigue and almost making her forget about the mission at hand. As Yuri and Phil resumed their search for herbs, Yuri discovered he had acquired a new type of magic, 
This magic seemed to upgrade automatically through regular use, intriguing Yuri. Suddenly, he heard Lime's cry for help and found his vision shared with Lime's, a high-level taming skill that allowed deep empathy and communication between the master and the beast. Lime was being chased by a wolf, and in its divided state, it couldn't defend itself. Yuri quickly summoned Lime back to his side, but the wolf followed. Seeing the menacing wolf, Phil was about to flee, but was stopped by Yuri, who encouraged her to face and defeat the wolf. He stressed that overcoming fear and challenges would enhance her skills and reputation. Phil hesitantly engaged in combat with the wolf, struggling against its sharp fangs. Despite wanting Yuri's help, he refused, urging her to focus and confront the wolf head-on, warning that any lapse in concentration could be fatal. Phil, striving for calm, dodged the wolf's attacks and counterattacked. Though the wolf was agile and avoided her strikes, Phil persisted, engaging in a fierce battle. Yuri, still just an observer, noted Phil's quick movements despite some errors. He recognized that among all the contestants from the previous test, Phil had the greatest potential for rapid growth. Reinforcing his belief in her capabilities, Phil continued her struggle with the wolf, nearly stumbling at one point, but was timely assisted by Lime. Thanks to this intervention, she was able to counterattack and ultimately triumph over the wolf. Elated, she turned to share her victory with Yuri, only to be struck by fear as the sound of approaching beasts grew louder. They were soon surrounded by a pack of wolves. Yuri sensed something amiss about the situation. Wolves, typically rated as level E creatures, are known for their pack behavior and intelligence, ranking them above solitary monsters. From his observations, the wolf Phil defeated seemed to be a decoy used to summon the rest of the pack. Yuri deduced that a leader must be controlling this pack, and he needed to find it. He instructed Lime to ascend and scout for the Alpha Wolf. As the pack attacked, Yuri infused his sword with water magic, turning it into an ice blade to fend off the wolves. Despite his efforts, more wolves kept arriving, making it clear that he had to locate and confront the pack leader. Enhancing his sword with more magic, Yuri bought time for Lime to locate the Alpha. Finally, Lime spotted it a dangerous level D silver wolf. Yuri unleashed a fireball through the forest towards the wolf, but it agilely dodged. He then planned a more strategic move. Asking Phil to hold off the wolves, Yuri prepared a high-level fire spell and launched it directly into the Alpha Wolf's mouth, ensuring it couldn't dodge. The Silver Wolf was instantly defeated, and the forest was scorched by Yuri's powerful fire magic. Phil was left utterly astounded by Yuri's display of power. To her, the spell he cast was on an unimaginable level, something far beyond her comprehension. For Yuri, however, it was just a regular demonstration of his capabilities. This incident not only showcased Yuri's formidable strength, but also highlighted the vast difference in their magical abilities. After successfully eliminating the Alpha Wolf and its pack, Phil and Yuri continued to gather some more herbs before heading back to the guild. Seeing the spoils of war laid out on the table, the waitress couldn't help but be astonished at the amount of mana stones they had managed to collect. Had they really taken down the wolf pack in that forest? It was truly beyond surprising. The two had only taken on their first commission task and had already defeated the wolves, even though their mission was to collect herbs, not to engage in combat. With such an achievement, Phil was inevitably going to be promoted to an official adventurer, no longer a trainee. Next, it was Yuri's turn. From his spatial storage, a heap of herbs covered a section of the floor, astonishingly among Yuri's herbs was a grade B wind mana stone. The high-level appraiser was flabbergasted. He remembered this wind mana stone being inside the Silver Wolf, the ruler of the Northern Forest. Could Yuri have defeated it? Yuri, with a nonchalant expression, answered everyone. As night fell, he kept the guild's adventurers busy. The manager quickly organized the herbs for him contacted the town's pharmacies to sell them, and the high-level appraiser had to examine the mana stone and decide on Yuri's reward. While waiting, Yuri turned to Phil, wondering if he could become an official adventurer. That was a certainty, not even up for debate. Yuri might even get a double promotion, a rarity in the guild. Just then, the manager rushed out to inform Yuri that, with his achievements, he had been promoted four ranks at once, from grade S to B. He was about to proceed with the paperwork when Yuri stopped him. 
Yuri didn't want the promotion at all, as high-ranking adventurers often get summoned for mandatory tasks, and Yuri did not want to be ordered around. He wished for a life of freedom. After that, he and Phil departed, leaving the manager in awe. Having worked there for 20 years, he had never seen someone as uninterested in rank as Yuri. On his way home, Yuri started pondering over what to do with his earnings from the mission. With the monostones sold and the herbs accounted for, Yuri had been recognized as an official adventurer. He thought maybe splurging a bit to celebrate wouldn't be too bad. Just then, Yuri stumbled upon a tavern and decided to enter. Upon opening the door, the bartender, surprised and excited, called out to Yuri, who didn't recognize him at first. It was Pancho, the dog beastman from the eastern forest, which puzzled Yuri even more since Pancho was known as an adventurer. Pancho's demeanor fell as he explained that he had retired from adventuring, as his role had largely been reduced to carrying luggage rather than actual adventuring. Deciding to quit, Pancho had started a new chapter of his life running this tavern. Pancho then served Yuri a seafood dish, which was unquestionably delicious. Pancho's culinary skills were well developed from his time managing logistics for his adventuring team, making him an excellent chef. As they enjoyed the meal, Pancho mentioned Yuri's adventuring work, noting that many in the tavern were talking about him. He cautioned Yuri to be careful, warning him about Jack, a figure who had been implicated in the recent decrease of adventurers in town. According to Pancho, Jack was eliminating adventurers to reduce competition and increase the demand for his services. Suddenly, Yuri pushed Pancho aside as an axe was swung down at the counter, revealing an assassin proclaiming his intent to kill Yuri. Yuri, remaining calm, planned to take down the assassin quickly to avoid damaging the tavern. Using his teleportation skill, he moved behind the assassin, wielding a bottle of wine as a weapon. Impressively, the assassin anticipated Yuri's move and counterattacked, but when he tried to strike Yuri, his axe shattered upon contact because Yuri had enchanted it with magic beforehand. Yuri then used a freezing spell on the assassin and delivered a finishing blow. The news of the assassin's defeat quickly reached Jack, signaling the end of the encounter and adding to Yuri's growing legend. Enraged by the failure of his hired assassin, despite the considerable sum he had spent, Jack was fuming when a mysterious figure appeared, laughing at the sight of someone making things difficult for Jack. This person appeared suddenly, and Jack, startled, drew his sword, pointing it at the newcomer who then vanished only to reappear behind Jack, advising him to calm down. The mysterious figure then produced a magical orb displaying Yuri's image and whispered something into Jack's ear, instantly driving Jack into a frenzy with the desire to kill Yuri right there and then. The following day, following Pancho's directions, Yuri made his way to the Snow White Weapons shop. Upon entering, he witnessed a woman Rico, loudly berating the shop owner Yugo, for selling her a defective sword and refusing to take responsibility. Yugo was adamant that the sword was of good quality, insisting that no matter how many times Rico complained, the outcome would remain the same. Yuri, observing from a distance, noticed the poor condition of the sword on the table, made from subpar materials which compromised its durability. However, its craftsmanship reached an agrade, indicating Yugo's skill as a blacksmith. Yuri was about to leave for another weapon shop, but decided that uncovering the mystery behind this could be beneficial. Approaching the counter, he questioned Yugo not about the craftsmanship, but the materials used. Yugo was surprised by Yuri's insight and revealed the true problem. No one in town could produce a quality sword anymore, because a golem tribe had taken over the quarry where blacksmiths sourced their materials two months prior. Despite posting a request to the Adventurer's Guild, there had been no response, forcing them to import materials from a neighboring village at exorbitant prices, making it impossible to meet Rico's demand for a quality sword at her price point. Yugo's lengthy explanation tired Yuri, who summarily concluded that the solution was to eliminate the golems. If no one else would take on the mission, he would. After declaring his intent, Yuri immediately left the shop. Rico, having overheard the conversation, followed him and introduced herself as an adventurer, hoping to learn more about Yuri's information. Upon discovering that Yuri was only a rank F adventurer, Rico couldn't hide her disappointment and advised him against going to the quarry if he valued his life. 
Yuri, indifferent to her concern, stated that his life was of no concern to her, a remark that irked Rico. However, setting aside her frustration, Rico decided she couldn't let Yuri walk into danger alone and chose to accompany him. Rico then led Yuri to the northern quarry. Along the way, she was curious why Yuri would spend money on an old sword for their journey. To Yuri, the sword was more than sufficient, but Rico didn't see it as adequate at all. She had never heard of anyone defeating a golem with a sword. As they entered the northern mine, Rico was surprised that Yuri took on this mission over her small dispute with Yugo, and Yuri felt the same about Rico, suspecting she was there out of concern for him, which embarrassed her. As she was about to explain, Yuri signaled her to be quiet as a golem appeared. Rico charged at the golem, asking Yuri to observe her fighting method. Yuri quickly grasped that while the golems were large and had strong attacks, their slow movement was a disadvantage. Rico would dodge and wait for the right moment to strike with her hammer. However, her attack wasn't enough to defeat the golem, which stood back up and launched a barrage of stones at them, turning Rico pale. Yuri drew his sword, deflecting the stones and even redirecting them back at the golem, shocking Rico with his ability to manipulate the situation. After having some fun, Yuri decided it was time to finish off the golem. He asked Rico to step back, intending to face the golem himself. Rico suggested he use her hammer, but Yuri, with a smirk, declined, reiterating that his sword was more than enough. Observing the golem a bit more, Yuri noted its slow movement and concluded there were many ways to defeat a golem. Rico's method was just one and two time consuming. Yuri then demonstrated a new approach to Rico, enhancing his sword with magic to strengthen it enough to withstand the golem. This tactical use of magic and skill showed there were indeed multiple ways to tackle an obstacle, each with its unique advantages. Just one move was all it took to bring down the golem, ending the battle so swiftly that Rico was left in shock. Following that, they continued their journey through the ore mine. Yuri, single-handedly moving from one group of golems to the next, dispatched each with just a single stroke of his blade. The corpses of the golems piled up, and he didn't stop until not a single one dared to approach any longer. Only then did Yuri decide that this place no longer posed a threat. They had accomplished their mission. Afterward, Yuri collected the materials dropped by the golems. He planned to bring the magic stones back for lime, and the iron ore for Mr. Yugo. The more Rico thought about it, the more puzzled she became, leading her to directly ask Yuri who he really was. She challenged the idea that he could be a rank F adventurer, as it seemed impossible for someone of that rank to defeat a group of golems with just a blunt sword. Yuri didn't have time to explain to Rico, as at that moment, Jack and his team appeared. The fact that Yuri could defeat Joker and the golems proved he was no ordinary person. In the end, Jack spitefully remarked that Yuri was just a detestable person, which irritated Rico, especially when Jack, appearing out of nowhere, insulted them and threatened to kill Rico as well. Reaching her limit, Rico didn't care who he was anymore and drew her hammer, ready to fight. Yuri quickly summoned Lime to stop Rico and took her out of the dungeon, opting to confront Jack's group himself. Before the fight, Yuri wondered why they persistently interfered with him, only to realize that he was a thorn in their side. Everything related to Yuri infuriated them. Jack had strived to be an adventurer, but in a world where the strong prey on the weak, he was once tormented by a more skilled adventurer. It was only after gaining enough strength to corner his tormentor that Jack realized even the strong fear death. To survive, he believed he had to stand above everyone else. Yuri's presence as an annoying adventurer who could complete tasks that Jack couldn't was something he could no longer tolerate, prompting him to order his followers to attack Yuri. Yuri gradually understood their emotions, realizing that in the end, they were still the weaker ones. He swiftly defeated Jack's subordinates, yet somehow, they managed to stand back up. Upon checking, Yuri found they were in a berserk state, no doubt due to some trickery from Jack. The solution seemed clear, take down Jack. At that moment, Yuri unlocked a new type of magic, wind magic. Distracted by this discovery, he was temporarily subdued, allowing Jack to attack with magic. However, Yuri quickly retaliated, unleashing a powerful gust of high-level wind magic. 
the fierce tornado that erupted from Yuri ensnared Jack, lifting him and his followers into the air, spinning them before slamming them into the rock walls. This was enough to knock them all out, ending their berserk state. With the immediate threat neutralized, Yuri called out to someone hiding in the shadows, challenging their attempt to remain unseen. To Yuri's surprise, this person, introducing himself as Nero, stepped out to applaud Yuri's performance and hoped Yuri would remember his name. Nero, emerging from the shadows, was evidently of a different caliber than Jack's group, operating on another level altogether. Yuri realized it was Nero who had induced the berserk state in Jack's group. He pondered whether to attack Nero directly. Nero then gave Yuri two choices, join his gang or die there. As Yuri considered his options, he felt a strange sensation, eventually recalling he had encountered Nero in a past life when Yuri was a knight facing numerous troubles with his group. To verify his suspicion, Yuri mentioned a unique feature of Nero's group, a number tattooed on the hand. Nero's surprise at Yuri's knowledge led him to reveal his own number, indicating Yuri was once part of this group in his past life. Yuri, curious whether the number still marked him after reincarnation, removed his gloves to check, knowing that if the number was indeed eternal, it would remain with him even through reincarnation. Yuri's number was zero, a revelation that cast a serious shadow over Nero's face and Yuri's as well, for he remembered that the leader of this organization bore the number one. This meant Yuri had no choice but to face his demise here, as the bearer of number zero was destined to be a hindrance to Nero's organization. Nero attacked with surprising speed, initially overwhelming Yuri. However, Yuri quickly adapted his strategy, using magic to hinder Nero's movements. He unleashed a combination of fire, wind and water magic in a continuous combo, rendering Nero unable to dodge. Nero, who had not anticipated Yuri's ability to wield three different elements, was quickly immobilized and frozen, unable to continue the fight. After dealing with the trouble Nero had caused him over the past few days, Yuri decisively finished him off. Miraculously, Rico was waiting outside the mine, unsure of Yuri's fate. After a while, Yuri emerged unscathed to Rico's relief. He promptly returned to Mr. Yugo with the valuable materials he had gathered. Mr. Yugo began crafting a sword for Yuri, producing a rank B greatsword that, due to the quality of the craftsmanship and materials, could easily have been considered rank A or higher. Yuri was concerned about the cost, but Mr. Yugo laughed off the notion, stating that failing to craft a sword for Yuri would tarnish his reputation. He revealed that the sword was made not only from the materials Yuri provided, but also from valuable items from his own store, which he gave to Yuri for free as a token of gratitude for clearing the mine of golems. Before Yuri left, Mr. Yugo thanked him again. Stepping outside with his new sword, Yuri breathed in the fresh air and unlocked a new skill, advanced swordsmanship. Just then, Phil and Rico came running over to join him. The two girls were not romantically involved with Yuri, but their misunderstanding of each other's intentions caused Yuri to laugh. Sometimes, life throws unexpected events our way, but Yuri found that the life of a rank F adventurer wasn't bad at all. He vowed to protect this life at all costs, embracing the unexpected friendships and adventures that came with it. It has been a month since Yuri reincarnated into this world. He has made many friends and embarked on countless adventures, gradually becoming familiar with this town. Somehow, he has become the town's quintessential F-rank adventurer. One day, Yuri went to the guild to meet Miss Gales and accept a quest. This time, it wasn't about gathering herbs anymore. Yuri wanted to take on a more challenging conquest quest. So, Miss Gales presented him with a goblin subjugation task. Goblins were the first monsters he encountered upon reincarnation, but this was his first time undertaking such a mission. Seeing Yuri's hesitation, Miss Gales advised that if it was his first time on such a quest, he should form a team, as numerous unexpected situations could arise during the mission. Teamwork would increase their survival chances. Heeding the advice, Yuri posted a notice seeking team members and arranged to meet at the fountain in the afternoon. Upon arrival, he found a man and two women waiting on a bench. After verifying their information, Yuri greeted them. Team leader Rit, on behalf of the two ladies, introduced themselves to Yuri and explained the rules, 
the rewards would be divided equally among the four members, and any valuable items found would be sold and the proceeds shared. Yuri agreed, but Rit's attitude quickly changed when he learned Yuri was only an F-rank adventurer. He disdainfully threw Yuri's guild card into the fountain and left. Yuri, unfazed, was retrieving his card when Rico arrived. Together, they decided to proceed with the mission. On their way, Rico explained the mission regulations to Yuri. There are two main types of quests, special quests, which require an adventurer's rank, and regular quests, which do not. The ones who rejected and disrespected Yuri were just being rude. Soon, they encountered two other adventurers who were also on a goblin quest, but had found no goblins and suggested Yuri and Rico look elsewhere. Rico quickly found a new location, but it was a two-hour walk. It was time for Lime to show off. Lime transformed back into his bird form, carrying them swiftly to the designated location. Seated on Lime's back, Rico was astounded, recognizing Lime as a cacatrice. The height at which they flew made Rico panic, pleading with Yuri to slow down for fear of falling to their doom. Yuri looked back at Rico and instructed Lime to ensure her safety, noting that their current speed was already slow and any slower might hinder Lime's ability to fly. Eventually, they reached the Western Highlands, where Rico, overwhelmed by the flight, struggled to stand, while Yuri remained unfazed, comparing the journey to a high-speed train ride in an amusement park. It took Rico a moment to regain her composure and appreciate the beauty of the highlands, a sight she had only heard of but never seen before. Yuri surveyed the area, spotting more than ten goblins. Though not particularly strong, they were adept at using their small size to evade capture. As Rico was enjoying the view, Yuri reminded her to draw her sword for battle. An arrow shot from the bushes was intercepted by Yuri revealing the goblins' strategy of using the darkness and the beautiful scenery as a cover for their attacks. This picturesque landscape had become home to the goblins, who began to emerge from their hiding spots. Yuri let Rico take the lead in the fight, supporting her from behind with enchantment magic that significantly increased her speed. With swift movements, Rico managed to defeat numerous goblins. When one tried to ambush her from behind, Yuri was quick to intervene, ensuring their complete victory over the goblins in the highlands. With plenty of time remaining, Yuri decided to hunt a few more monsters. Rico, visibly exhausted and not in good shape, refused Yuri's concern. However, Yuri wasn't easily fooled and used a skill to appraise Rico, discovering she had been poisoned. It was puzzling how Rico had been poisoned, prompting Yuri to inspect her injuries and find a minor cut on her ankle caused by a sneak attack from a goblin. The wound, though slight, had a cloudy appearance, indicating the goblins had poisoned their arrows. Rico was taken aback by the goblins' use of poison, finding it unusual enough that they wielded weapons at all. The situation seemed increasingly grim as Rico's fatigue escalated due to the absence of an antidote. She eventually collapsed, apologizing to Yuri for becoming a burden. However, Yuri was not troubled by this. He requested Lime to draw out the poison. Lime, transforming into his avian form, perched on the wound and within moments, absorbed all the toxins into his body, significantly improving Rico's condition. At this pivotal moment, Yuri unlocked a new ability. Advanced Holy Magic, a powerful skill that he decided to test immediately on Rico. To their astonishment, her wounds healed instantaneously under the influence of Yuri's newly acquired magic. The duo, reinvigorated, resumed their mission to eradicate the goblins, assigning the task of disposing of the carcasses to Lime. Their primary focus was on collecting the magic stones that the goblins dropped upon defeat. In the midst of their quest, Rico stumbled upon an axe of exceptional quality, an anomaly in the context of typical goblin armaments which usually comprised rudimentary tools like stones and branches. The presence of such a refined weapon, coupled with the goblin's strategic use of poison, suggested the influence of an extraordinarily intelligent goblin among them, likely a goblin king, orchestrating the actions of its kin. This revelation reminded Yuri of the very first goblin he had slain upon his arrival in this world, which might have also been of royal lineage. Determined to eliminate the Goblin King and dismantle its command structure, they faced the challenge of locating the creature's stronghold. Given the goblin's craftiness, tracking them was no simple task. However, Lime proved indispensable in this endeavor. 
Yuri managed to locate two goblins and sent Lime to stealthily follow them. Through a unique empathic bond, Yuri was able to share Lime's vision, enabling them to pinpoint the goblin lair. Yuri and Rico discreetly tailed the goblins to a cave nestled within a mountain pass. The entrance was narrow, but the interior was surprisingly spacious, making it an ideal hideout. Lime's signal from within the cave confirmed their target location, beckoning them to venture inside. As they prepared to infiltrate the lair, they were unexpectedly confronted by Rit and his two companions. Rit, recognizing Yuri's intent to confront the Goblin King, advised him against proceeding, citing the formidable challenge the King posed to an F-rank adventurer like Yuri. In a surprising turn, Emily, a member of Rit's team, extended an invitation to Yuri, proposing he join their group in a support role with the assurance of a fair share of the rewards for his contribution. Yuri immediately accepted the offer to join Rit's team, surprising Rico and prompting her to wonder if Emily was Yuri's type. Yuri quickly dismissed the idea, explaining his strategic decision. Entering the cave was risky, and additional manpower would significantly reduce their chances of casualty. Emily and Rit led the way, ostensibly treating Yuri and Rico as mere porters, but in reality, they intended to use them as shields. As they ventured deeper into the cave without encountering any goblins, Rit's group decided to take a break and eat. Emily and the other girl lavished Rit with delicacies, their casual demeanor making it seem more like a leisurely outing than a quest, much to Rico's annoyance. Rico then offered Yuri some of her food. Just as Yuri took a bite, a foul stench enveloped them. Yuri attempted to dispel the odor with his wind magic but failed. Using his analytical skills, he identified the smell as toxic miasma, which, although not immediately harmful, warranted caution. At that moment, a group of unusually large goblins appeared, their formidable size and appearance starkly contrasting with the goblins they had encountered outside. Rit's complexion turned pale with fear, but out of pride, he engaged in combat, only to find himself utterly outmatched by the goblins' strength. When faced with a life or death situation, Rit abandoned all pretenses of bravery and fled, leaving the two women to be captured by the goblin. Yuri, seemingly unfazed by the unfolding chaos, complimented Rico on the deliciousness of her food and expressed a wish for more after the battle, before springing into action. The goblins had not immediately killed the captured women, but instead began to tear their clothes off with the intent to assault them. Yuri intervened, decapitating the goblins and rescuing the women. As more goblins rushed to attack Yuri, he realized that a sword alone was insufficient. Switching to magic, he erected a wind barrier that deflected and counterattacked the goblins' assaults. Just as a goblin attempted a sneak attack from behind, Rico arrived in time to assist Yuri, impressing him. Their moment of triumph was interrupted by a distinct voice that drew their attention to a new figure. A goblin unlike any they had seen before, identified as a B-rank danger-level goblin mage. The goblin mage taunted them for daring to invade its territory, leaving Rico pale and shocked at the realization that a goblin was capable of human speech. Rico's instincts screamed danger, signaling that the goblin mage before them was a formidable adversary beyond her capabilities. Overwhelmed by fear, she found herself paralyzed. Yuri, sensing the gravity of the situation, positioned Rico behind him, ready to confront the threat head-on. He recalled his previous encounter with a talking goblin, surmising that this goblin mage must have exploited its kin to attain such intelligence. Yuri reassured Rico, urging her to stay calm. He reminded her that their experiences and battles had honed their skills, making them more capable than before. Together, they engaged the lesser goblins in combat, but Yuri soon sensed something amiss. These goblins were far weaker than those they had encountered previously, leading him to suspect a trap. His suspicions were confirmed when the goblin mage burst into laughter, revealing that the lesser goblins were merely a decoy. As a dense fog enveloped them, Yuri felt his body temperature rise, a clear sign of a cursed magic at work, corroding his body and robbing him of his sight. In this dire moment, Yuri unlocked a new skill, a high-level curse magic that he immediately turned against the goblin mage, reversing the effects of the curse and condemning the mage to a painful demise. After the mission, Yuri and Rico returned to the guild to claim their reward.
Rit had fled the cave in terror, while the two women, though physically unharmed, were left shaken by Rit's betrayal. Yuri found himself on a fishing mission, accompanied by Battist, a middle-aged man who had once been an adventurer himself. Injuries had forced Battist into retirement, but he chose to stay connected with the adventurer's community, enjoying their company and sharing his fishing expertise with Yuri. Their conversation was pleasant and informative, enhancing Yuri's fishing skills. As Yuri sat fishing, he relished the freedom and tranquility of the moment, a stark contrast to the monotonous and stressful life he had left behind in his previous world. Lost in thought, he was taken by surprise when a fish bit the bait. The fish was large, forcing Yuri to enhance his fishing rod with a skill to successfully reel it in. Battist explained that what they were experiencing was known as double catch in fishing terms, where a second fish preys on the first one hooked. He urged Yuri to reel in the catch quickly before it got away. With a strong pull, Yuri brought the fish to the surface, revealing it to be a shark. The sight sent Battist and the others fleeing in terror, but Yuri, unfazed, skillfully halved the shark with a single stroke of his sword and continued fishing. Shortly after, Emily and Musil came looking for Yuri, their perspective changed after the incident with Rit. They realized that one should not judge others by their appearances, and that a strong man like Yuri was more to their liking. They offered to assist Yuri with his tasks, to which he agreed, asking them to bait the hooks. The sight of wriggling worms in the bait box, however, horrified them, and they ran off, leaving Yuri to handle the tasks alone. Just as Yuri was settling into his solo mission, Phil arrived early in the morning, surprised that Yuri seemed unaware of the day's schedule. She explained that it was the monthly training session for adventurers, a mandatory event that Yuri found bothersome. Despite his inclination to skip the session, avoiding it could result in the revocation of his adventurer's license. Reluctantly, Yuri agreed to attend with Phil, but first, he had to deal with some rats. Sensing a murderous intent from a hundred meters away, Yuri launched a fireball in that direction. This time, his target was prepared and quickly evaded the attack. Despite the enemy's efforts to remain hidden, Yuri's keen senses uncovered his presence, impressing even his adversary. The enemy then dispatched number 230 to deal with Yuri, confident in his minion's abilities and believing that his pet alone could destroy Yuri. Upon arriving at the Adventurer's Guild for the training session, Yuri was navigating through the crowded training ground when a young girl called out to him to move aside. Everyone recognized her as the Thorny Goddess, but Yuri was clueless about her identity, much to Phil's astonishment. Phil found herself once again in the position of having to enlighten Yuri. The Thorny Goddess, a B-rank adventurer who had earned her position through her own abilities, was highly respected by her peers. She was assigned as the trainer for the day's session. Standing before the group with a look of disdain, she expressed her frustration at having to train F-rank adventurers, which bruised the pride of many present. When one of them verbally retaliated against her, she promptly subdued him with a display of her formidable strength. The thorny goddess then challenged the others to attack her, but despite their efforts and coordination, they all ended up defeated. It was at this point that she took notice of Yuri and Phil, impressed that they hadn't reacted impulsively to her provocation. Deciding to personally instruct them in swordsmanship, she asked them to follow her to the northern forest. Phil pointed out that by taking them for personalized training, the thorny goddess was neglecting the rest of the group. The goddess however was unconcerned, asserting that only those with potential deserved her time. She believed that the others needed to self-reflect and recognize their weaknesses instead of reacting impulsively, warning that such behavior could be fatal during mission. Arriving at the training location, each of them was given a bronze sword, similar to the one the thorny goddess wielded. She demonstrated her skill first, effortlessly slicing through a tree trunk with a single strike. Next was Phil's turn. Lacking swordsmanship skills, she struggled to replicate the feat. Her initial failure was expected, but it was an opportunity for her to exert effort and improve. Despite multiple attempts, Phil couldn't make a significant impact on the tree. Then came Yuri's turn. Holding the sword, he felt a surge of excitement about this exercise, having not engaged in such physical activity for some time. In the past, he often damaged swords due to his inability to control his energy output. 
This was an excellent opportunity for him to practice controlling his power. With a swift motion, Yuri cleaved the ancient tree in half, leaving the thorny goddess speechless and astounded at his prowess. Yuri was momentarily unsure if he had done something wrong, especially since as the student, he wasn't supposed to surpass the instructor. The thorny goddess tried to maintain her composure, downplaying Yuri's impressive feat with the sword as something ordinary. She then moved on to the next part of the training, magic practice. She inquired if Yuri had ever been formally trained in magic. Learning that he hadn't, she chuckled, finding an opportunity to demonstrate her skills. The surrounding rocky area was ideal for magic training, being a secluded space where stray spells wouldn't cause unintended harm. Demonstrating her technique, the thorny goddess approached the largest stone, infused her sword with fire magic, aimed, and released it. The resulting explosion was massive, leaving a huge hole in the stone and impressing Yuri with her prowess. Indeed, she lived up to her status as a B-rank adventurer. The thorny goddess emphasized the importance of imagination in magic, explaining that for high-level adventurers like herself, continuous practice and innovation of new techniques were crucial. This approach resonated with Yuri, reminding him of his training methods in his previous life. She then invited Yuri to practice. Following the techniques taught by Aisha, Yuri infused his sword with fire magic and released it, creating a blast far more powerful than Aisha's, leaving the thorny goddess astonished. However, the force of Yuri's attack caused a landslide, sending rocks tumbling towards them. Yuri quickly conjured a wall of ice to stop it, but it proved ineffective. Phil and Aisha huddled together in fear, with Aisha urging Yuri to flee. Yuri, feeling responsible for the situation, refused to leave. He reasoned that if one wall of ice couldn't stop the landslide, multiple walls might. His quick thinking paid off as the disaster was averted. Aisha, now deeply curious about Yuri's identity, questioned who he really was. Yuri casually brushed off the inquiry, maintaining that he was just an F-rank adventurer as he had previously introduced himself. This left Aisha returning home in a state of disbelief, unable to comprehend the day's events and Yuri's true capabilities. After completing his mission that morning, Yuri decided to visit Pancho's shop, where he was warmly welcomed and treated to a special dish of bullfish salad, a fish Yuri had caught during a previous mission. This was his first time tasting bullfish, and Pancho shared that while delicious, they were challenging to catch. Fortunately, their price had recently dropped, likely due to a skilled fisherman entering the scene. Pancho then brought up Aisha, revealing a past closeness with her. He was surprised by her rise to her current status, acknowledging her talent but also noting her slight arrogance. Pancho half-jokingly suggested that Yuri might help temper Aisha's pride. At that moment, a new customer, Rose, entered the shop. Pancho seemed to know Rose, who greeted him warmly and inquired about the business before sitting next to Yuri. As Rose ordered, he asked Yuri about the up-and-coming adventurer everyone in the guild was talking about, only to realize he was sitting right next to him. Rose was surprised by Yuri's unassuming appearance, mentioning that Aisha had spoken highly of him. Yuri responded amiably, while Pancho grew pale, seeing Yuri's casual interaction with Rose, who was not just any adventurer, but the strongest a rank adventurer in town. Rose didn't dwell on the formalities, echoing Aisha's sentiments that Yuri was a genuinely kind person. He then got straight to the point, seeking Yuri's help for a dragon-slaying mission. Pancho, looking pale, tried to intercede on Yuri's behalf, pointing out that Yuri was only an F-rank adventurer, and that the mission was too dangerous. Rose, however, dismissed Pancho's concerns, asserting his seriousness and recognizing Yuri's potential as comparable to a rank adventurer's. Rose shared concerning news from the Adventurer's Guild about a recent incident so severe that it resulted in four out of five injured adventurers dying due to the lack of immediate medical attention. This prompted the Guildmaster to suspend all quests within a 50km radius. Only one adventurer, a C-rank, survived the ordeal, highlighting the gravity of the situation and the potential dangers of the upcoming mission. The survivor from the C-rank adventurer's team recounted their harrowing encounter with a ferocious dragon, a story that resonated with Pancho, who remembered similar tales of a dragon whose presence drastically altered the ecosystem of its territory, turning it into a haven for monsters and a hunting ground for adventurers.
Rose sought Yuri's opinion on joining the mission to tackle this dragon, but the discussion was interrupted by Chloe's objection. Chloe, skeptical of Yuri's abilities due to his F-rank status, openly criticized Rose for considering Yuri for such a perilous task. She introduced herself to Yuri, mentioning she had heard of him through Aisha, and expressed disbelief in whatever had convinced Aisha of Yuri's competence. Chloe firmly stated that she wouldn't allow an F-rank adventurer like Yuri to join their team. Rose, increasingly frustrated, reminded Chloe that an adventurer's rank wasn't the sole measure of their capability. Undeterred, Chloe proposed a challenge to Yuri, channeling 30% of her power into a plate and stating that if Yuri could withstand her attack, she would accept him into their team. Failure would mean Yuri had to leave them for good. Yuri accepted the challenge, astonishing Chloe by stopping the plate in front of him, neutralizing her mana infusion, and then nonchalantly returning it so that it flew past Chloe and embedded itself in the wall. Rose laughed heartily at this display, pleased to have found a formidable member for their team. He again asked Yuri for his decision. Despite Yuri's reluctance to engage in such a dangerous mission, especially given the expectations surrounding an ranked adventurer's request, he felt compelled to accept, knowing that refusing might complicate his future in the town. Consequently, Yuri agreed to join the mission, albeit with reservation. At the western gate of the ancient city of Lydia, following Rose's instructions, Yuri ventured there early the next morning to gather. Shortly after, Rose appeared, and his team consisted only of Aish and Chloe, one a rank adventurer and two B rank individuals. This team was quite strong, indicating that everything would likely be fine. Once assembled, they all set off together. Despite being an a rank adventurer, Rose couldn't manage to find a decent carriage, it was too small to fit Yuri, Chloe and Aish comfortably. Due to the cramped space, Chloe and Aish ended up arguing loudly while Yuri tried his best to endure it. The situation escalated when their carriage was suddenly flung into the air by a flock of wyverns. Yuri quickly checked the information on these creatures and discovered that the monsters had been tamed, implying someone was controlling them. While Yuri was still piecing things together, Aish and Chloe had already sprung into action, battling the beastly horde. Just as they finished off one group, another flock approached. Rose delegated tasks, assigning Chloe and Yuri to deal with the left flank, while he and Aish took the right. Yuri, attempting to strategize with Chloe, found her increasingly irritable. Though Rose might have had a high opinion of Yuri, Chloe certainly did not. She just wanted Yuri not to get in her way. Chloe unleashed a basic water magic spell, Ice Cannon, to bombard the wyverns. However, when a higher-ranking wyvern appeared, Chloe's ice cannon was effortlessly blocked and countered. Fortunately, Yuri, with Lime's help, managed to intercept the attack, protecting Chloe. Chloe then resorted to an intermediate water magic spell, hurling a massive ice block at the wyvern. But due to the great height, the force of the ice was diminished, not enough to bring it down. That was until Yuri charged forward and struck the wyvern down with a single blow leaving Chloe utterly astonished. To Yuri, it was nothing out of the ordinary, but for Chloe, it was anything but. After completing their task, the two quickly returned to Rose's group. True to being an A-rank adventurer, Rose and Aish had taken down twice the number of monsters compared to Yuri and Chloe, including two high-ranking wyverns among them. Despite the urgency, Rose gathered everyone to focus, deducing that the wyverns were being controlled. This revelation shocked Chloe and Aish. Controlling a B-rank beast was no small feat. Yuri quickly agreed with Rose's assessment. However, another issue arose, their mode of transportation. The wyvern attack had severely injured their horse, likely beyond recovery. Traveling by foot to their mission location would take about two more hours, a delay Yuri wanted to avoid at all costs. He considered asking Lime to transform into a bird monster to carry them swiftly to their destination, but feared it might terrify them. Instead, Yuri opted for a simpler solution. He approached the injured horse and cast a high-level healing magic spell, instantly healing all of its wounds, to the group's amazement. Rose then took a moment to advise Yuri. He acknowledged Yuri's strength but cautioned against the public use of sacred magic, as it was exceedingly rare and one of the most valuable schools of magic. 
Using it openly could attract unwanted attention, and in the worst-case scenario, Yuri could be captured and used as a weapon of war. Yuri understood why Rico was surprised by his use of sacred magic before. He scoffed at Rose's concern, stating that if someone were injured in front of him, he wouldn't hesitate to use his powers to save them. Chloe grew more puzzled about what kind of person Yuri was, while Rose admitted that time would tell, as he was wondering the same thing. Yuri's actions earned his teammates' trust, marking the beginning of a new journey for him. As the group resumed their journey on horseback, Rose sensed something odd and signaled Yuri to speed up. They finally arrived at their mission location, only to find it desolate. Dismounting, they proceeded on foot, unaware of when they would encounter the dragon demon. As they ventured further, monsters began to attack, seemingly controlled by the demon's mind, making them much more aggressive. While fighting, Rose observed this behavior, about to warn the others when a tremendous pressure enveloped them. The dragon demon had appeared, its presence causing them to tremble with fear. Rose quickly raised his shield to protect the group as the dragon demon roared, causing him to go pale. Yuri activated his analysis skill, identifying it as the roar of the dragon demon. This roar could knock out weaker adventurers and even Rose, Chloe and Aisha were trembling in fear, indicating the dragon demon was more powerful than them. A loud laugh diverted their attention to Zark, who had been waiting for Yuri's arrival. The roar had no effect on Yuri, proving he was worth Zark's time for a game. Zark ordered the dragon demon to attack Rose, but Yuri stepped in to block the attack, charging at the demon and slicing it into pieces. However, the dragon demon didn't die because it was already dead. Its body parts reassembled and continued to target Rose's group. Yuri had to use sacred healing magic on them, and at that moment, the dragon demon reacted as if it was afraid of the sacred magic. Yuri then realized that entities of death fear sacred magic, so he unleashed his high-level sacred magic to purify the dragon demon. Now came the real challenge, defeating Zark, who must be stronger than the dragon demon to control it. Zark leaped down from the cliff to face Yuri, intrigued by Yuri's serious demeanor. Humans were always so weak, so whenever an adventurer like Yuri appeared, it thrilled Zark. But playtime was over, and Yuri's end seemed near. Zark attacked, but Yuri dodged, observing that while Zark's attacks were powerful, his movement was slow, which Yuri found manageable. Suddenly, the ground cracked open under Yuri's feet, surprising him with Zark's strength, possibly augmented by some lost strengthening magic. As Zark targeted Rose's group to force Yuri into a direct confrontation, Yuri stepped in front of Rose, buffing himself with various enhancement skills to counter Zark's punch. After a massive explosion, Zark was unharmed, but Yuri had injured his right hand, indicating the gravity of the situation. Zark was incredibly powerful. After enhancing his abilities threefold without any effect on Zark, Yuri realized he needed a different strategy. He summoned Lime to transport Rose's group to safety, focusing all his energy on a direct confrontation with Zark. Despite knowing his chances of victory were slim, Yuri decided to target Zark's back. He managed to land a hit, but it had no effect, and Yuri was violently thrown against a mountain. Zark laughed boastfully, declaring his body impervious to physical attacks, making it clear that Yuri's efforts were in vain. Yuri, now injured and running low on mana after extensive use of his powers, recognized this as his final opportunity. He resorted to his sacred sword technique, a skill capable of breaking through any defense. Skillfully dodging Zark's attack, Yuri delivered a powerful strike that successfully severed Zark's right arm. Zark screamed in pain, finally recognizing Yuri's true identity. As Zark attempted to escape by summoning his minions and taking to the skies, Yuri launched a high-level fire spell that obliterated Zark instantly. Completely drained, Yuri collapsed, deciding to rest until his companions awoke. Upon their revival, Rose, Chloe and Aisha were astonished to learn that Yuri had single-handedly defeated the Dragon Demon, an entity classified as an S-ranked monster. Yuri modestly dismissed the demon's strength, claiming it only required a single move to vanquish. The discussion then turned to the distribution of the spoils of battle. Yuri produced a gigantic dark stone from his inventory, a unique item dropped by the demon. 
Faced with the dilemma of how to divide the singular item, the group marveled at its size and power, having never seen such a large mana stone before. Recognizing Yuri's sole contribution to the demon's defeat, they unanimously agreed the stone belonged to him. Nonetheless, Rose warned Yuri about the stone's immense power, capable of destroying an entire city, and urged him to exercise extreme caution in its handling, emphasizing the need for responsibility and awareness of the potential consequences. Yuri was well aware of the power and significance of the Dark Stone. He had no intention of selling it or feeding it to Lime. After concluding their adventure, the group returned to the Adventurer's Guild to report their success. A few days later, a curious event unfolded. Yuri awoke to find himself lying on the ground, which was peculiar since he had fallen asleep on Lime. Turning around, he discovered a young girl lying next to him. Upon seeing Yuri awake, the girl rushed to embrace him. Yuri was initially stunned, but he quickly recognized the scent and voice as Lime's. It turned out that Lime had consumed the monostone Yuri had left on the table, which resulted in her transformation into this human form. Lime, excited to show Yuri her newfound ability to walk, stood up eagerly. Yuri felt a mix of concern and curiosity about using Lime in battles given her excellent performance, but he wondered whether it was appropriate to bring Lime out in this human form. Ultimately, he decided to leave the decision to Lime, acknowledging her unique characteristics and advantages. There was no need for Lime to imitate him in every aspect. Lime then transformed back into her smaller form, ready to continue the journey alongside Yuri. Once ready, Yuri continued on to the Adventurer's Guild. What quest shall I take on today? He pondered, standing before the quest board. The usual goblin and wolf quests were still there, offering nothing new. As Yuri was undecided about which quest to take, a voice called out to him. A young man jumped down from the second floor, requesting 30 seconds of Yuri's time. He introduced himself as Dutch, and his companion was a rat named Lemon, which took Yuri by surprise. It was rare to encounter someone with a magical beast companion like Lime. Dutch could tell Yuri was indecisive about which quest to choose, so he came over with a proposition. While the notice board mostly displayed ordinary tasks, Dutch had a special mission to offer Yuri today. Even though Yuri was not keen on accepting requests from others, something about Dutch's offer made him reconsider just for today. Agreeing to Dutch's request, Yuri followed him outside to embark on the mission. On the carriage ride, Dutch expressed his curiosity about Yuri's contract with a slime, suggesting perhaps Yuri should consider contracting with a more formidable monster. Yuri, however, firmly believed Lime was more than enough. This prompted Yuri to question if Lime was really that weak, to which Dutch confirmed that slimes, especially the green variety like Lime, were considered the weakest. Dutch laughed heartily, admitting it was his first time seeing someone choose a green slime as a companion. If Lime proved to be as useful as Yuri claimed, Dutch joked he might lose his title as a rare monster hunter. Suddenly, their carriage broke catapulting them into the air. Fortunately, Lime transformed into a giant form in time to catch them, leaving Dutch utterly astonished at the sight of such a massive slime. Is this really just a normal slime? He wondered, recalling his earlier assertion about the weakness of green slimes. Dutch's face turned pale, realizing the extraordinary ability of Lime to grow so large. While waiting for Dutch to repair the carriage, Yuri learned more about their destination, the Dragon Ravine a sacred place for beast tamers. It was the dream of every beast tamer to form a pact with a valley dragon, where dragons congregated, making it a revered location. This time, Dutch sought Yuri's help to capture a young dragon to bring back. Though the mission was somewhat dangerous, Dutch had no intention of leading Yuri into a deadly situation. He had carefully calculated everything. Currently, it was the breeding season for the ferocious dragon species, during which their strength would significantly decrease, having from their usual capacity. Capturing just one young dragon could fetch a very high price on the market. This intriguing story only fueled Yuri's interest further, and Dutch was eager to share his glorious past with him. As they traveled, Dutch regaled Yuri with tales of his days as the renowned rare monster hunter from the exile region. However, Yuri couldn't help but wonder why, despite all his accomplishments, Dutch was still only a rank C adventurer. 
Dutch, somewhat embarrassed, sighed and suggested that perhaps society just couldn't keep up with his advancement. Eventually, they arrived at the Dragon Ravine. To reach the dragons, they needed to climb a cliff, a task for which Lemon was responsible. Dutch tied a rope around Lemon, allowing it to secure the rope on the cliff for them to climb. Their coordination was impressive, making Yuri realize he had much to learn from Dutch. Upon reaching the top, they were greeted by a group of kobolds, which, according to Dutch, were generally friendly towards humans. However, Yuri sensed hostility from them. Dutch explained there were two ways to tame them, either by defeating them and then building a relationship or by feeding them, similar to how Yuri tamed Lime. Dutch had prepared a special food for this occasion and enthusiastically went to feed the kobolds, but they attacked him instead. It was then Yuri's turn to act. The kobolds were fast, but Yuri didn't intend to kill them. Instead, he exuded a killing aura that frightened them, allowing Lime to tie them up. After conversing with the kobolds, Yuri learned they had been driven from their territory by the dragons, whose nest was at the peak of the mountain. Yuri agreed to help the kobolds reclaim their territory. Following the kobold leader, Yuri and Dutch set out to find the dragon's nest. Along the way, Yuri even came up with a name for their kobold guide. While Dutch found the name somewhat unappealing, the kobold leader was fond of it and became very obedient to Yuri. The journey to the mountain peak was extremely challenging. The loose rocks nearly caused Dutch to fall to his demise, but fortunately, Lemon and Lime worked seamlessly together to save his life. As they neared the summit, their path was abruptly blocked by an inconveniently placed boulder. Unwilling to navigate the treacherous cliffside again, Dutch decided it was time to reveal his trump card. He bit his hand and drew a summoning circle with his blood, calling forth a golem that left Yuri astonished. Yuri recognized the summoning technique as one he frequently used when he was still a demon king. Dutch was proud of his golem, considering it a symbol of his strength. However, the golem struggled to move the massive rock, prompting Dutch to ask Yuri for help. It's just a rock, no need to exert yourself, Dutch said. Yuri requested Dutch and the golem to step back, drew his sword, and effortlessly split the giant boulder in two, leaving Dutch pale-faced in shock. How can a beast tamer wield a sword like that? It was utterly illogical to Dutch, who had never heard of a swordsman who could also tame beasts. Typically, individuals would pursue only one profession their entire lives. Now Yuri understood why Pancho had mentioned that acquiring a new skill was challenging. People usually stick to one career. But Yuri was no ordinary person. Having lived three lifetimes, he could easily assimilate new skills without the need for rigorous training. After more traveling, they finally reached the mountain's summit. Before proceeding, Dutch took out some snacks to replenish Yuri's energy. At that moment, Yuri sensed someone approaching. It was Aisha, a rank B adventurer. Her appearance in such a place suggested she was there to hunt dragons. However, Aisha immediately corrected that assumption. She was there to regulate illegal dragon hunting. Dragon body parts are extremely valuable, used in weapons and jewelry, leading the guild to enforce strict rules on hunting these creatures. Thus, high-ranking adventurers like Aisha were tasked with patrolling areas where dragons are found. It was then that Aisha noticed Dutch and promptly exposed him in front of Yuri as a fraudster known for exploiting inexperienced adventurers for his own gain. Aisha's remarks made Yuri realize that the stories Dutch had shared were suspicious. Could it all have been a deception? At that moment, Dutch kneeled, pleading for forgiveness, insisting he hadn't done anything illegal. However, their attention quickly shifted as they were surrounded by a group of dragon hunters which Aisha had mentioned earlier. Aisha was about to take action when Yuri stopped her, wanting to handle it himself. He summoned the kobold troop he had recently tamed, and in a single turn, they sent the hunters fleeing without pursuing them further. Dutch watched in awe, realizing that summoned creatures inherit a portion of their master's strength. The kobolds summoned by Yuri were exceptionally strong, indicating Yuri's own formidable power. Meanwhile, the defeated hunters reported back to their leader, who was furious to learn that they had been bested by a rank F adventurer, immediately putting them in their place. After dealing with the dragon hunters, Yuri and the group proceeded into the cave. Along the way, Aisha thanked Yuri for his assistance. 
Dutch was somewhat irritated by Aisha's continued presence, wondering why she was still following them even after the dragon hunters had been dealt with. Aisha explained that she still had tasks to complete and didn't fully trust Dutch. Moreover, she wanted to accompany Yuri, as he always managed to surprise her with his mastery of swordsmanship and magic, which seemed as effortless to him as spitting. Dutch was also surprised by Yuri's summoning capabilities, but Yuri remained unfazed, considering such feats to be quite ordinary. Suddenly, Dutch detected a peculiar smell, indicating they were near the dragon's lair. Excitedly, Dutch rushed ahead to investigate. The sight of the dragon's nest was overwhelming, offering a sensation unlike any other monster they had encountered. Dutch was primarily interested in the dragon egg. As he attempted to stealthily take an egg, his presence was detected, and a heavy killing intent emanated from the nest, turning Dutch pale. Even Yuri and Aisha were taken aback by the intensity of the malice, facing the most formidable creature since Yuri's reincarnation. Dutch, in a panic, pleaded with Yuri to help him steal the dragon egg and then flee. However, stepping into the dragon's lair, Yuri realized the selfishness of such an act. Dragon parents value their offspring immensely, and stealing their eggs merely because they are considered monsters is an utterly selfish deed. Aisha also advised Dutch to abandon such thoughts, explaining that dragons are highly intelligent creatures that would remember and hunt down anyone who steals their eggs. At that moment Anges, the leader of the dragon hunters, appeared. He had arranged for one of his men to sneak up and restrain Yuri, mockingly taunting Aisha for working with a rank F adventurer. Now with Yuri seemingly under control, Anges was curious to see what Aisha could do. However, Yuri quickly proved him wrong by breaking free and effortlessly defeating the man restraining him, followed by the rest of Anges's underlings. None could withstand Yuri's strikes. Anges, slightly more capable than his followers, managed to block Yuri's attack, surprising him. Yuri inquired about Anges, to which Aisha revealed that he was a former adventurer with strength comparable to young rank B adventurers. Realizing he couldn't overpower Yuri with physical strength alone, Anges resorted to using his last resort a concocted potion designed to agitate certain monsters. He threw it at a dragon, intending to make it ferociously attack Yuri and Aisha. However, when the dragon's attack came, Yuri managed to block it, stunning Anges with his ability to even fend off a dragon's assault. Yuri then used his monster communication skill to calm the dragon, explaining that it was merely scared of the intruders in its territory. The potion amplified its fear, but once Yuri reassured the dragon, the effects of the potion wore off, and the dragon, now pacified, warmly accepted Yuri, granting him the skill of the highest order of beast taming. With the dragon tamed and Yuri's new skill acquired, it was time for Anges to face the consequences of his action. Yuri's handling of the situation not only thwarted Anges' plans, but also demonstrated his extraordinary abilities, earning him respect from both the dragon and Aisha, and further proving the depth of his character and skills. Yuri commanded the celestial dragon to attack Anges, and at that moment, the dragon's body began to glow, a sign of the tamer's contract enhancing its power and awakening its true form. Its increased speed and precision left Anges floundering, ultimately leading to his free fall from the sky as the dragon caught him by the neck. The incident left Dutch gaping in astonishment at Yuri's ability to tame even a dragon. For criminals like Anges, justice demanded that they face legal repercussions. Yuri had Lime tie them all up, and Aisha planned to contact the guild for proper handling. She summoned one of her tamed birds to send a message back to the guild. Meanwhile, Dutch was nowhere to be seen until they spotted him on the dragon's nest, jubilantly discovering what he believed to be a treasure but was actually just dragon dung. Yuri, upon analyzing it, decided to keep the truth from Dutch, respecting Aisha's suggestion. It seemed Dutch was in dire financial straits, and the realization that his treasure was worthless could drive him to despair. Feeling sympathy for Dutch, Yuri was approached by the Celestial Dragon, which offered him a dragon bone as a token of its evolution. Yuri generously passed this gift to Dutch, hoping it would aid in his financial recovery. With his high-level beast communication skill, Yuri successfully mediated between the kobolds and the dragon, facilitating an agreement for them to share the territory peacefully. 
Upon returning to the guild, Aisha, grateful for Yuri's assistance, shared the reward money with him. Before Aisha could leave, Yuri inquired about her past with Anges. She explained that despite their age difference, they were both promising adventurers who rose through the ranks together until Aisha advanced to rank B, a milestone Anges couldn't achieve, fueling his envy towards her. Yuri commanded the celestial dragon to attack him. At that moment, the dragon's body began to glow, a result of the beast tamer's pact, enhancing its strength and awakening its true form. The dragon, now faster and more accurate, lunged at Anges, who turned pale with fear. Unable to cope with the dragon's agility, Anges was caught by the neck and dropped from the sky. The battle was over. Dutch watched, mouth agape, in awe of Yuri's ability to tame a dragon. For criminals like these, justice must be served by the law. Yuri instructed Lime to tie them all up. Aisha decided to involve her guild in handling the situation, and summoned one of her tamed birds to send a message to the guild. It was then Yuri realized Dutch was missing. Dutch was actually on the dragon's nest, jubilantly finding something that made him leap for joy. Using his analyzed skill, Yuri discovered it was just dragon dung, puzzled at Dutch's happiness. Aisha gestured to Yuri, suggesting it's best Dutch remains unaware of the truth. Dutch had been struggling with business losses and a massive debt. Learning the truth might drive him mad. Yuri began to feel sympathy for Dutch. The celestial dragon approached Yuri, seemingly wanting to communicate something. It offered the dragon bone from its recent evolution to Yuri, who then generously gifted it to Dutch. Next, there was the issue with the kobolds. Thanks to Yuri's high-level animal communication skill, he successfully mediated between the two species, leading them to agree on sharing their territory. Upon completing the mission, everyone returned to the guild. Since Yuri had assisted Aisha, she generously shared the reward with him. Before she left, Yuri stopped her, curious about her relationship with Anges. Aisha revealed that when she was a novice adventurer, Anges had saved her from danger. Despite their age difference, both were promising adventurers, rising together to rank C, until Aisha reached rank B and Anges, consumed by jealousy, did not. So, Anges did some pretty disgraceful things, like bullying novice adventurers and stealing their money. When his actions were exposed, he was stripped of his license and vanished from the town. Aisha never expected to encounter him again in such a place. She knew that adventurers who went astray often joined the criminal underworld, and it seemed Angie's was now working for someone else. Curiously, Aisha then turned the conversation back to Yuri. She felt that despite his childish demeanor, Yuri was incredibly strong, but that alone wasn't enough. There was a guild meeting next week, and Aisha insisted Yuri attend so she could train his spirit. Somehow, Anges had managed to survive. Severely injured, he struggled to find a place to heal. Being beaten by an F-rank adventurer was a stain on his life. Anges, furious, vowed to seek revenge on Yuri after he recovered. Just then, a voice from behind startled him. The woman didn't need any explanation. With a touch to Anges' head, she knew everything he had experienced. She laughed upon hearing he was defeated by Yuri. Anges, trembling, begged for his life and promised to hand over the mission item quickly. But at this point, she didn't need it anymore. With a flick of her finger, she unleashed a power into Anges's body. He screamed in agony as his body began to mutate, turning him into a monster. The woman laughed, delighted at how quickly she had found Yuri, the man who had killed her brother. The next morning, Yuri was awakened by Phil. It was the day for the monthly training of the new recruits. Yuri had just remembered Aisha insisting he participate in this session. Thanks to Aisha's generous payment, he could afford to move into a larger room. Phil happily ran to Lime's room next door, only to be terrified by the kobolds to the point of nearly fainting. After getting ready, Yuri and Phil set off for the guild. On the way, Yuri explained everything to Phil, mentioning that the dragons were in mating season and couldn't leave their nests. Reluctantly, Yuri had to take care of the kobolds until the dragon breeding season ended. Both Yuri and Phil gathered in the training yard. Today, ten people were supposed to participate, but only seven showed up, making others curious. Aisha, with a nonchalant expression, informed them that the missing three had been sacrificed and could no longer participate. This was the harsh reality of becoming an adventurer. Aisha sternly warned everyone that to survive this path, 
they must adhere to the training schedule and follow her instruction. Last month, after being disciplined by Aisha, no one dared to challenge her authority anymore. Aisha then began to announce the day's mission. She took out a shiny bag, and to everyone's surprise, their task was to pick up trash. They were to clean the town until not a single piece of litter remained. The adventurers were confused and questioned Aisha how this task related to survival. Aisha didn't have time to explain, she simply told them to do it and that they would understand in time or they might never understand at all. Everyone began working, some grumbling, but Phil was enthusiastic. Yuri, curious, noted that this task was quite normal for Phil, as she had been trained this way since childhood. Seeing Phil's enthusiasm, Yuri also put in effort. An hour later, he had collected a full bag of trash. He hadn't noticed before, but the town was indeed littered with garbage. At that moment, Aisha appeared and announced that only Yuri and Phil had passed this round of the challenge. Yuri still didn't quite understand the connection between the two tasks, so Aisha explained. In the world, there are two types of people, those who litter and those who pick it up. If there are litterers, there must be cleaners to fill that gap, because trash doesn't just disappear on its own. If Yuri wants to have a long career as an adventurer, he must be a cleaner, meaning he must be ethical. She used Anges as an example, a talented person but lost, focused only on one goal. Now Yuri understood the lesson. Until now, Yuri had overcome challenges with the help of friends who supported him and who also needed help themselves. If Yuri had been corrupt and not helped them, he wouldn't be where he is today. At that moment, Phil noticed a lot of trash on one side and excitedly ran to pick it up, only to be scared off by two individuals who were smoking and littering the ground with cigarette butts. Yuri approached them, asking them to clean up their mess. Laughing, they mocked Yuri, claiming they were providing low-level adventurers like him with employment. Furious, Yuri asked Aisha if he should clean up these two as well. Angered at being called trash, they attacked Yuri, who didn't care who they were anymore and decided to teach them a lesson so they'd never litter again. He used fire magic to singe the hair of the one with curly hair, then used wind magic to toss them into a trash bin, ensuring they wouldn't dare to litter again. Thus, Yuri successfully completed his training mission for the month. In a vast castle shrouded in darkness, news of Zark's defeat had arrived. The leader couldn't understand how Zark, one of the demons renowned for his skills within the demon tribe, could be defeated, especially when even the evil dragon Zark had raised was destroyed. This was utterly baffling. At that moment, two individuals voiced their desire to take on this mission, but the leader paid them little attention, focusing only on Gilly's opinion, which angered them. They attacked Gilly, thinking that defeating her would secure them the mission. However, Gilly was no ordinary opponent, she quickly dispatched them, then informed the leader that the plan was simple. There was no need for the demon tribe to intervene directly. Humans could be used to destroy other humans. That day, Yuri went to the guild to accept a mission and found it unusually crowded. The adventurers were all gathered around the mission board, making Yuri curious. He discovered that a new mission had been posted, to eliminate an ogre. This mission required a rank adventurers, meaning neither Yuri, Aisha, nor Chloe were qualified to undertake it, leading to some confusion among them and the other adventurers. Are ogres really that strong? Of course they are. Ogres are among the most belligerent monsters, with strength far surpassing human limits. There's scant information about the Ogre King, but it's known that in a rank adventurer from a neighboring town once took on this mission and failed miserably. Intrigued by the challenge, Yuri decided to undertake the mission. As he was leaving the guild, he bumped into Phil, who was surprisingly also on the ogre extermination mission. Embarrassed upon being discovered by Yuri, Phil hurried away, likely having her own reasons for taking on the mission. Yuri, not overly concerned, knew he needed to head to a village named Moigolna. He could easily fly there on Lime, but that would be too showy, so he opted to rent a carriage instead. Coincidentally, Yuri and Phil met again while hiring the carriage. During the ride, Phil apologized and revealed the truth to Yuri. Moigolno was her homeland, which for some reason had long attracted the attention of ogres. Phil knew battling them was dangerous but couldn't abandon her homeland. She also warned Yuri that her homeland harbored something extraordinary 
so if he was to take on this mission, he needed to be well prepared and extremely vigilant. Yuri wasn't sure if the situation was as Phil described, but he decided to go and assess the situation firsthand. 